What an absolute thrilling barn burner, exciting game in Palo Alto, California. Uh, joking, but uh, Notre Dame taking care of business, knocking off a bad Stanford team, fifty-six to twenty-three. Lots to talk about with this game. Notre Dame finishing out the regular season nine and three. So uh, we're going to talk about this matchup, what Tim saw in this game. Uh, and then we're going to kind of talk about a big picture outlook on this season. Um, Notre Dame finishing nine and three. Um, so folks, if you're watching live with us, watching back um, or listening via podcast, really appreciate you making us here at blue and gold part of your day as always so yeah tim um what'd you see from tonight what what, what were what were some of the the takeaways for you from uh this blowout win for the irish this is definitely not a the stanford team of 10 years ago that's for sure all right 2018 when this was a top 10 battle in south bend in 2018 no, it was an undermanned team it was a tired team it was a notre dame team that went out yesterday and came out a little sloppy some turnovers here and there and then gave it to audrick estime and oh let them go crazy just an absolute monster game even the, even in the first half when they didn't have him in like on the hartman interception drive the first play they you know they go cute do a little tyree jet sweep which you know anyone watching this uh knows you know, Chris Tyree is not good with jet sweeps and he gets negative loss. And then Hartman throws the corner route for the interception because he had thrown a couple beautiful corner routes, like two or three earlier, I think two before that one. So went back to the well too much, got the interception. And then after that, they're like, just run, 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 run. A couple nice play actions from Hartman on the, you know, two touchdown passes and there's your butt kick. And it, it was a lot like, last week except for Stanford has you know we talked about that in our warm-up on our Friday thing stop the passing attack not that it's crazy and athletic freaks all over but they do so many gimmicks and so many things here and there to catch you off balance and sure enough you know they did that first half and uh, kept Notre Dame on their toes and then after that as I like to say you know the best team always wins over the course of 60 minutes. We saw that a bunch today, actually, in the earlier big games on the national college football scene. So Notre Dame did that. They get they get their ninth win. And um, you know, we'll we'll be talking about the what ifs about this season for uh many, many moons on what uh you know did not happen this year with this Notre Dame football team. But at the end of the day, nine wins. I think that's kind of well, it's interesting now with the playoff thing, how that's going to wind down. But um, more than likely, they're going to play January 1st in the Rely Quest against LSU. You know, if all ends the way everyone thinks it is, which is going to be crazy. So, but we'll get into that when that thing's official next Sunday. So, Audric Estime. Um, what was it? 238, 240? 225 for 238, four touchdowns. The uh, more or less projection for our friends over at uh, Prize Picks was 107. Um, oh. I did not, I was not able to get an entry off in time. Um, traffic, I, I mean, I got home, I mean, right after the game started, like a few minutes oh. after the game started. It was miserable traffic for me coming home from seeing the in laws. And then uh, you went to a meeting last night. Yeah. I, yeah, I was at a, I saw Justin Thurman, 2025, yeah. running back okay. to the Irish. Um, but uh yeah, I so knew uh, real quick, Mike. So 235 was the official. Is that the official number? 238. Dude, so he ends up being fourth all time. He passed, you know, Julius, couple Julius Jones games, Josh Adams against BC, his monster game, Reggie Brooks. I was at the 92 SC game where he ran for 227, 1992. That was a hell of a game. So he's uh, Julius Jones game against Pitt, Vegas Ferguson in 1978, and Phil Carter in 1980 are the only ones ahead of Estime. It's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So let, let's just go to Estime tonight, and then we'll kind of talk about some of those numbers because Notre Dame football PR team was tweeting out a ton of stuff. Okay. So, yeah, what do what, you think about it? Because he was, he was the story of the game. I mean, the Hartman yeah. performance tonight was very much just – just manage the game. I mean, they didn't really ask him to do much. The the game plan was feed estimate um and, and and have this guy break some records. 
Oh, God, yeah. It, it breaks some records. People were talking about give him 300 yards tonight because he didn't get the – yeah, I mean, we didn't talk about this on Wednesday. Just how asinine was it that the Doak Walker committee – didn't have him even on the semifinalist. But you know what? I went back because there's certain periods during the day at school where, you know, I, I get an hour off and I went and did some homework. There, there's never been a Notre Dame running back named a semifinalist. And I, that award's been around since 1990. And I'm talking Reggie Brooks, who was fifth in the Heisman, wasn't even a, a semifinalist finalist in 1992. Julius Jones, great year. Josh Adams, Kyron Williams, the ACC Offensive Player of the Year in 2020, and he doesn't even get the damn semifinalist. So that tells you about that award. So, no, he was he was unbelievable. I was in a chat with some Notre Dame friends, and we were talking about, and they were just, oh my god, he's going to go for 200. And I, I'm like, how? All they do is rotate backs. Well, they didn't do that today. They fed him like a mad dog, which is nice. Which me as a big Notre Dame fan, I'm I'm like ticked because they had him for one year. They should have known. When this season started, and I, you know, I talked about this a thousand times, Mike, like run him to death this year. This is your one year. He could have been the first team All-American. He should have won the Doak Walker this year. He could have been a Heisman finalist if he had 15, 1600 yards. But the way the season got, they rotated a bunch. I got it. I get it. It's just not that he would have done this every single week, but there's some games he would have had 125, 150, maybe 175 here or there where – his yards end up being 1,500 this year, and it's a monster season for him in Notre Dame. But as, as it goes, a hell of a last game. Does he play in the bowl game will be the next question. We'll find out. But if not, man, he goes out on the highest of highs. So congrats to Estime for a hell of a junior season. Really, this last two years. Last year, you know, rotated so much with him and Tyree. So he's going to be fresh if any NFL team's worried about carries. He doesn't have a lot in his couple of years, so he's going to be ready to roll. All right, Super Chats um, already coming in. Uh, Matthew Schott said, uh, who should slash should not come back next year and who will? Well, uh, tough to say right yeah, now. I mean, we'll talk about this a little on our Wednesday show. Well, yeah, we'll do that a little Wednesday, and you know, we can talk about this more next Wednesday right after a game. I mean, who knows? I mean, if there's a specific one, I got my opinions on a bunch, I think. A bunch of guys will leave. I, I I don't know how anyone wants to come back for a six year after this year. Talking the linebackers, Cross, you know, I mean Mills. If Mills, Tyree come back, it's a COVID year because they've played four years. So do they want to play a true five? Um, those are interesting questions to have. And then as far as the juniors, um, you got to. I mean, Fisher's been rumored to be out there. SMA we assume to go. Watts has played four years. Um, well, he registered his first, excuse me, but so Xavier Watts, who's going to be a first team All American, really come back for a fifth year. Those are just, you know, things to ask yourself. So we'll, I mean, we'll, I mean, we'll learn more about that here in the next week or so. Yep. Matthew Scott, appreciate uh, the, the super chat. Uh, Tim, uh, to another super chat, thank you very much. You said, which is more absurd, the Meyer stump last year, or sorry, Michael Meyer, uh, Mayor, Michael Mayer. Come on, come on, singer. Snub last year or the estimate snub this year. Um, yeah, it's got to be the estimate snub. I mean, not even making the semifinalists is ridiculous. And then the question, is there Irish bias in the media? We will let you guys talk about that. I mean, Tim and I just want to talk football. Um, but I'll say real quick, yeah. The, oh, Michael, the Joke Walker Award is not a media. Th- uh, that's not a uh, – that's the, the Joke Walker Award committee coming up with that. That's nothing to do with the media, I don't, I don't think. But go ahead, Tim. It, it, Exactly. So there can't be a, that, that much of a bias. They've won three Buckus Awards in the last decade. So there's one. Um, no, I mean, all these awards, we got to remember, these aren't AP, right? I mean, these are all committees, like Mike said. Dope Walker is their committee. The Buckus is his committee. The Joe Moore Award is their little dozen committee. You know, things of that nature. Obviously, the Heisman is the Heisman vote, uh, the Heisman winners and a bunch of writers nationally across the country. But yeah. is there a, a media uh, yeah, hey, I'm still pissed off. Quentin Nelson did it win the 2017. That's the biggest. That is the big one of the biggest snubs in the history of college football. How he didn't win the Outland. So, and I'll say the same thing about Joe Alt this year if he doesn't win one of the Lombardies or uh, the Outlands that he's up for. You know, Julian Love I thought was the, the Thorpe Award winner in 18. He was absolutely awesome. So, you know, it is what it is. Hell, Liam, Liam Eichenberg was a finalist, and I don't think he deserved it in 2020, but he was a finalist. So. You get some, 
yeah, but that to me not even being a semifinalist is crazy. But that's what, that's why we're Notre Dame fans. We get pissed off easy. <laughs> Tim, thank you for the ten. Uh, Goolsby or sorry, Goolsby. Um, I do too many of these damn shows. Hide. We got some big boy super oh, wow. chats. We got yeah. some big boy super chats. Uh, Rob Simpson, forty-five dollars super chat. Thank you very much. He says sorry. Send forty-five dollars because he didn't have a comment with it. Uh, post Ooh. another another one here. He says uh, sent forty-five dollars to celebrate Faison's forty-five yard touchdown. If we get a few more lacrosse players next year, we might win the Natty. Of course, uh, Notre Dame uh, national championship lacrosse team lacrosse. from last season, dude. Jordan Faison continues to ball. That posts on the play action. Yeah. Um, it was uh, was very nice. Faison leading Notre Dame um, in uh, receptions and uh, receiving yards today. He won three for 66 and a touchdown, Tim. You continuing to like what you see from Faison? He, oh, yeah. I mean, he's, he's once again, every time you just see him running out there, he's just a different, different level of an athlete. I mean, I compared him right away to just Golden Tate, just the way he just shakes a little bit. And obviously he has a – a lot to, to grow and keep learning, but he's he's gonna be a hell of a football player next year. He really is. Hey, speaking of lacrosse guys, isn't there a didn't they just get a lacrosse walk on kind of like phase on? I saw I think Kyle posted yep. right the next yep. few days. So there he goes, Rob. Another lacrosse guy is coming to Notre Dame as a preferred walk on. We'll see if he he's a wide receiver, so we'll see if he uh tears it up come August. But uh yeah, Faison's a special, special young man. He's super talented. And I, I said this, you know, when he first blossomed on the scene after, his, I think, the Louisville game, I had never watched him. And I was honest. I went and watched his highlight film. <laughs> Blew me away. Absolutely awesome high school highlight film. That dude is electric. He's a, he, he's going to be nice the more, you know, as he keeps getting his seasoning going on here. Yep. Rob, uh, appreciate the super chat. As always, my friend, very generous. Um, thank you guys uh, very much. And Matt Irish with a 50 bomb says, no comment or question. Just thanks, Tim and Mike, wow. for great coverage and content this season. Go Irish. Matt, very kind of you. Thank you very much for the generous $50 super chat. Um, yeah, I mean, guys, this, you know, it's not the end of the uh, of the Mike and Tim show. Tim, we're going to be live. But man, on, Mike, seriously. Wednesday night. Oh. And definitely. No, but 12 games. I'm like, this is like so fast this year. Yeah. Maybe because of the way the buys played out at the end of the year, you know, we just jammed through the games all the way up into ST. I mean, it's over. We're just hanging out, waiting to see who's, you know, goes to the, the playoffs next week, how the Bulls, you know, work themselves out. Um, the way some of these games ended today were wild. And then Notre Dame just sitting back and now uh, we'll roll from there. But uh man, what a season, a fast, fast season for the Irish. It just yeah. feels like bam, it just went like that. Yeah, and we're gonna kind of we'll we'll talk about the big big picture outlook of the season, kind of that uh because nine and three it's just such a it's like a right in between kind of number, which we'll talk about here in just a second. So yeah, Matt Irish, really appreciate the fifty dollars super chat. Very kind, uh, very generous, and uh we thank you uh for your support. Uh, Chris Allen says covered the season win over under. Yeah, it was eight and a half, right? Yeah, eight point five. Yeah, nine ninety nine to represent. Thank you very much, Chris. Another could have, should have kind of year onward. Thanks, gents, for the great coverage. Chris Allen, ten dollars super chats. Always good to see you in here. I know someone named Chris Allen um, personally, so every single time I always um, notice you in the chats because that name sticks out to me. And I know you're just about every single show. So Matt, uh, uh, Chris Allen, appreciate you. Uh, Matt Irish, appreciate your super chats. Um, and of course, um, you know, uh, Rob Simpson earlier. And uh, so we got trash in, in a super chat in just a moment. Um, and then I want to talk about Audric Estime and some of the records that he broke tonight. Um, and folks, if you're just joining us live, of course, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you are new here, we post tons of Notre Dame football and recruiting videos throughout the week. Um, and, uh, yeah, plenty of live shows, um, th what, three a week, um, at, at minimum during the off season. So we'll continue to, to keep those rolling as well throughout the off season. Of course, we're not really in off season yet, December, um, with, uh, not only bowl coverage and, and, and bowl prep and whatnot, also recruiting up to national signing day, Tim signing day is less than a month away. I kind of got to get yeah. in that mode. 
um, here December, coming up. December twenty twentieth, right? I think I I don't know why I have that in my head. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. That is correct. So you may not be buying tickets for Notre Dame Stadium until next fall, but that doesn't mean you're not going to be buying tickets anytime soon, folks. And that's where we're going to introduce you to the sponsor for tonight's show. It's GameTime.co. If you put in GameTime.com, it's you're not going to find it. It's GameTime.co, um, a website, an app that makes the ticket purchasing process easy because it can be a stressful process, especially if you are purchasing tickets at the, at the last moment. But GameTime.co really makes that a lot easier with killer last-minute ticket deals. So you can relax and get hyped for that fun that you are going to have. And with the promo code BGI, you will get $20 off your first purchase. And the best thing is that they will guarantee that you'll get the lowest price or, or, or they will refund you 110%. You don't need to plan months in advance since they have deals right up to game time to so snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and make sure you use that promo code bgi for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply um use that promo code bgi folks last minute tickets lowest prices guaranteed about chevy chase uh on sunday you can see him um in chicago tim do you want to go see chevy chase my friend Chevy Chase is still doing live shows. Um, I guess. No, no. If I want anything with Chevy Chase, I'll just rewatch Fletch from back in the old days. So that's my uh, go-to Chevy Chase. Spies and, like us and Fletch. Those two are. All right. Awesome. So more of a, and, and obviously his movie, uh, Christmas Vacation is, is oh, of fantastic. Course. Of course. Uh, I will be watching that soon. And then for more of a new school Chevy Chase, the show Community um, is a goofy ass yeah. sitcom, but it was, uh, yeah. he, he was really good in it. Yeah, it was on NBC. I know it was part. I never got into it, but I know a lot of people yeah, like the show about community college. It's hysterical. Um, but yeah, thank you to our sponsors, GameTime.co. Uh, let's get to the super chat from Trash. Uh, it says, "Year's not over, but this has been a great year." How many early enrollments do we have? Love blue and gold. Love Mike and Tim. Love Notre Dame. Thank you, Trash. I think it's fifteen, um, uh, according to my counts. Could that change? Sure. Uh, but right now, Notre Dame's looking at 15 early enrollees, which if I can pull up my list, I think that is either breaking the record or at least ties the record for early enrollees at Notre Dame. If I can find my notes here. No, okay. So 12 in 2023, 12 in 2022, and 14. I think 2021 was the record breaker. Um or that was the last record. So yeah, this would be the record 14 and 2021 was the, uh, or is the current record. So yeah, big year of, uh, early enrollees trash. Appreciate the super chat. Um, we'll get to one real quick from John Massey he says, how would you guys compare the talent of the last two, three classes, um, and the incoming freshmen to the teams BK had during the stretch of 10 win seasons. Hmm. Well, it, well, let me just say this. I mean, we're going to find out pretty quick because this is a a lot of older dudes on this football team are probably going to be moving on. So 2024 is going to be flushed with a lot of these young guys from 21 – or not 21, that's Fisher and Alt seniors. Yeah. Uh, 22, 23, what, 2024 freshman? What fre – there's always a freshman, right, Mike? There's always a couple oh, yeah. like Cooper Flanagan this year. You know, obviously, the freshmen had to play because there's no other – wide receivers to play but who are those two three four freshmen that rise up to get in with this these 22 23 classes so yeah I'm you, we're, i mean we're gonna know pretty quick yeah. but as talent goes on numbers and four stars blue chips whatever metrics people want to use it's definitely higher than the previous it, five six classes yeah yeah this this 2024 class is especially so top heavy uh and kyle kelly did an article recently about like for this 24 class, like the highest ranked since kind of thing. And I think mm -hmm. it was Lambert's the highest Notre Dame offensive tackle recruit since like 2006 and Sam Young. Um, so Keedron Young's going to be the highest ranked running back for Notre Dame in a while. Bryce Young's going to be the highest ranked uh, defensive end or uh, in quite some time. Mm -hmm. And Cam Williams 
like you know ending up as a five star most likely will be the highest ranked since I can't remember exactly. Yeah, yeah. Since Michael Floyd, Michael oh, Floyd, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a consensus, right? Because obviously there's certain five stars from right. rivals two, four, seven. He was just doing a consensus. Yeah, thing, yeah, right? yeah. According to the industry ranking, which obviously yeah. we use the most, so um, I I hope that partially answers your question. But yeah, that's that's quite uh you know the the the, the heavy topic to get into. Um, you know, at, at this point, um, you know, with this show. So yes, saying Jordan Johnson, the thing is like, th that's just rivals. Like he was a five-star yeah, rivals, but we, we, we're going off of one metric. So that's the thing. Like, I think fans will kind of like pick each recruiting service apart to like fit the, the argument. But like, if you just use the one metric, which was the industry ranking, then no, Jordan Johnson was not a five-star. I think he... According to the industry ranking, he was in the 40s, and Cam Williams is, um, you know, in the top 30s, um, or, or, or you know, I'm sorry, in the top 30. Um, so, uh, uh, a couple super chats are coming in, Tim and Jay Vit. We'll get to you guys in just a moment, but did want to go to some of these records. I just kind of wanted to read some sure. of these tweets from the Notre Dame football PR account. The 238 yards tonight moves Audric Estime's career total to 2,000. 321, which is 11th all time at, at Notre Dame and just 20 yards behind George Gipp for 10th on the Irish career list. Um, let's see, kind of want to get that. Yeah, so after three quarters updates, Audrey Estime was at 1,341 yards, yeah, a fifth all time. So he passed up Brooks, so he's yep. he's fourth now. Yeah, so that, fourth, yeah, yeah, that is um quite impressive um, but he's up there with george gip i always love that as a notre dame fan like the gipper is still up there that tells you how awesome he was so when people talk about great notre dame football players i know it's 100 years ago mike but he was pretty good <laughs> he was pretty good so if you got the gipper still up there 100 years later um that's just that's just impressive so that's to make it be like hey i'm up there with the gip that's pretty uh that's pretty cool for him but yeah, what a hell of a game, hell of a yeah. season. That, you know, these two years, you got to remember, when you look at career with him, because I think the only time he carried the ball was in the garbage time against Georgia Tech in 2021. That's it. He was he played goal line fullback, goal line blocking back yeah. most of his freshman year. So everything he's done is just two seasons. I, you know, I talked about this on the Goolsby show. I don't think I talked about it with you last week. Sure where I said it I'm fine with whatever opinion you guys have on this topic, but I didn't love that. Like Sam Hartman on senior day was the biggest ovation considering he was just here for a single season. If you wanted to give him the biggest ovation and make senior day all about Sam Hartman, that's fine. You could do whatever you want. But for me, I thought there's like, all right, there, there's, there's other seniors right and, and what not to honor now you can't really honor audric on senior day but like to me audric's kind of like the heart and soul of the team um and, and i i think you can make an argument that he's even you know the face of the team you know right there with sam i really liked that this last regular season game and possibly especially at the running back position it wouldn't make sense if that's his last game in a notre dame uniform yeah. Running backs can just get paint. I mean, you take so many hits. I would understand if he sits the bowl game. And I, Tim, I think we would agree it's probably likely at this point. So a long way to say I really liked that this game was all about him. It, it, it was, especially you know, on the offensive side of the ball. Audric, um, kind of being the story of the game um, for likely his game last game in a Notre Dame uniform. For what he's meant a lot to this program for these these past couple of years. Um, yeah, so I liked that, Tim. I, I was really happy that this game was, you know, kind of like, all right, he got snubbed. He's been clear and he's yeah. close to breaking a lot of these record or, you know, moving up the record list. I should say, mm -hmm. I, I, I really liked that tonight. No, no, it was awesome to see. And, you know, even last week, you know, the game he had last week and, uh, you know, the ovation, I didn't see, I usually don't watch the guys running out of the tunnel, getting the claps and all that stuff. So I didn't see all that stuff. And then uh, I just watched the game. So I don't know. I didn't see all the ovations, but I know I saw the Clausen thing, Dave Clausen complaining about Hartman the other day. I thought that was a, 
that was an interesting take by him. But uh, yeah, I mean, SMA was, yeah, you can see he's the face, definitely he's him and Sam Hartman. I mean, you go back to the video, the show me the money, right? The video for the, was that the green? That was for the green game re reveal. So the fact that they put SMA in there with Hartman shows you, you know, what they, what they think of SMA being the face after last season, you know, football team and then going into this year. So. Yeah, I mean, I thought that, you know that's what I think of when you think estimate being the face. Like, oh, go back to that video they did. How he was there, like they had Mayor and uh, Bosky last season. Yeah, Hartman and estimate. It's kind of how it really played out too when you look at this season with those two guys being the face, and then obviously the guys on defense, a handful of guys on defense stepped up as well. Yeah. Um, Super chats. Uh, Tim says impressed with the receivers downfield blocking tonight. Your thoughts? Go Fletch. Yeah, first off, yeah, exactly, Tim. Go Fletch. He's that's Chevy Chase's classic. Uh, I'll be honest, I did not rewind a lot tonight because I was like very nervous. <laughs> Why were you nervous? That. Well, Bubo, man, I tried it a few times and it would take like a minute to come back into play. Like on YouTube TV, man, it's quick and easy. Even Peacock is awesome with rewind. But yeah, tonight I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna rewind a hell of a lot. But uh yeah, I mean those guys have been blocking all their their butts off. They ran, I think, for three eighty, whatever it was, Mike. Three, I think, the most yards since the twenty eighteen, the the demolish in a Florida State they did in two thousand eighteen with Dexter Williams and those guys. So, that, and that was the last game uh, Notre Dame running back had two hundred was Dexter. I started going over all the games. Kyron had one ninety nine against North Carolina, which one ninety nine. Like you can't get that guy one more carry. But uh, no, the receivers have been awesome blocking all year, and you got a ton of freshmen out there getting reps like mad, like mad dogs getting ready for next year. Yeah. Tim uh, McCarty, thank you for the super chats as always. Jay Vitz, um, the $10 super chat, thank you very much. He says, way too early expectations. Is the defense better or worse next year? With our three fifth year, six year yeah. linebackers and cross leaving, is our receiver core good enough the next year to make the quarterback conversation moves? Oh man. oh man, I think the defense is going to be worse next year. I mean, it's, I mean, because you might, you might have a new DC as well, and Mills leaves. Watts. I mean, you're going to lose Cam Hart, Baptiste, uh, Baptiste, who played fantastic this season. I think what a great addition from Ohio State. Um, does what about Jordan Matelho? Yeah. Way too early expectations. We got, we you know. Yeah, we got a lot of time to talk about that. And then the receiver core. Well, let's just do that. I mean, the, the receiver core is definitely going to be – I mean, you, you, you have to assume they're going to be better, right? Because, I mean, you got all, a ton, but, ton of freshmen. A ton of freshmen returning but, as sophomores. Yeah, it's a, good enough to make the – I don't know what receiver core is going to be good enough to make the quarterback conversation move. I mean, it's always going to be a huge conversation yeah. unless Notre Dame gets some – you know, Bama 2019 receivers, or you know, whatever that crazy year was when they had Waddle and all those guys. But um, but one thing with this wide receiver core, comparing them to let's just compare them to 2021 when you got obviously Thomas, Colsey, and Styles playing last year as sophomores after getting at least Colsey and Styles getting experience as freshmen. I think I mean this is I mean these are better wide receivers when you think Flores, Great House. Obviously, you got to throw Faze on in there now. He's a true freshman. Yeah, and obviously with Bray, I mean Braylon James is going to play, so next year he's going to definitely get in the in the in the run. And I saw him on the sidelines getting hyped up with some guys, so that was cool to see. It's a better group compared to the 2021 group, so I don't know a conversation moot because to me it's still who is the guy. I'm this is just the way I I think who's that guy that you're just going to dump him the ball and he's going to go make something happen. Until one of those guys there, they may have to just scheme them open. You know, Great House has definitely done that lately. He's probably the one if you know stays healthy as far as true wide receiver skills is the best of the bunch, I feel. You know, when you watch he's man, he that that one he caught today was outstanding. Yeah. With a touchdown. Yeah. Uh Chris Allen said, uh, like and follow. Thanks for the great convo and analysis this year's gents. So, yeah, thank you very much, Chris. Um, you guys make sure you hit the thumbs up. Um, on this video, he says, thanks for a great season of shows. While I do appreciate the comment, like, I, I don't love the it's over feeling. Cause yeah, the, the, I mean, this this puppy goes all year round. Tim and I, you Dude, know, do between it never ends, Mike. 
we, between the games, yeah. the weekly show that we do on Wednesday nights, and then like you know the pregame video we do on Friday, Tim, we're and you know we're going to do some emergency ones. You know there's going to be a coach leave. You know there's going to be there's going to be someone that either declares oh, or yeah. transfers that's going to be a head scratcher. Like what? Oh, it's. I mean, last year we did a live one for for ninety minutes after Drew Pine, and that was one of our biggest shows we've yes. ever done. Yes, so. There's going to be something. It's Notre Dame football. There's no such thing as a day off of relaxing. Something wild is going to happen, and we're going to be yapping about it all off season. Yep, but uh, Keith, I really do appreciate the comments. Uh, Jay Vitt says, uh, "How about your boy Tobias yeah. uh, with that snatch? I like the hands on the catch. I like the tight ends a lot next year. I like the young defense, and think we have a deep defensive line." Tim, I'm going to let you tackle this one. Yeah, man, that was a hell of a slant from Tobias right there, and caught that. The tight ends. Uh, no stays today, so I haven't even asked you that, Mike. I, you can answer that when you come back. I don't know if he was hurt. I was not on Twitter before the game. Um, I didn't see him. Raritan played a ton. Cooper Flanagan's been Singer's surprise pick ever since August. And Flanagan, I want my, he's going to start next year, Mike. He's a dude. He's a dude. De La Salle guys are different animals. He's a dude. He's going to start next year as a sophomore. I don't know. I, don't, I think he's better than Stays. Raritan is going to be – obviously, Raritan's freakish athletic, man. I hope – stay healthy. That guy's got NFL all over him. But I think the combination of just being a nasty football player, another Troy Nicholas type from 2012 and 13, I see Cooper Flanagan being that guy. I really like him. As far as the D-line, you say we have depth. We will find out because they are going to be a lot of young guys – and don't be surprised if Freeman goes and pulls two out of the portal somehow. He's got it. He's got to find. He's he's got it because Rubio and Anya are your expected starters. Let's just assume, just saying, Mills and 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 Howard Cross. They don't come back for a fifth in a sixth year. But who's the guys behind them? It's going to be these recruits we're talking about. These these Heinish and you know Houston is Tyson Ford going to step up in year three? What's he going to play? We are going to find out because the depth on the D-line is going to be a major question if these guys all leave that you know we expect them to do. At least I expect them to do. That's just my opinion. Javit, appreciate the uh, the $10 super chats. Um, oh, real quick. Someone says Mitchell's starting next year. I'm sure he's saying Mitchell Evans. Mitchell Evans is more than likely probably not going to play until October, end of September. So I'm talking beginning of the season. I don't see Mitchell Evans coming back after an ACL injury running around early, he's going to probably do what Raritan did come back and Raritan came, I think Raritan's first game was Louisville. So I kind of see Mitchell Evans doing the same thing next year. He's not going to be there at a uh, and So uh, Tim, I'll take you. I'll take Goolsby. Whoever wants to go in on uh, purchasing some property in South Bend, um, and uh, whenever we get to do that, Tim, I know we'll be using Irish Realty. Um, and for folks interested in this, the, web, or the website's on the screen, uh, irishrealty.net slash walk uh, hyphen two hyphen ND. Um, it is your tickets to experiencing Notre Dame all year long. I mean, you have obviously football. I mean, the new era of men's basketball. Um, a a top-ranked women's basketball team. You got hockey, baseball. You got that Notre Dame championship lacrosse team. And Irish Realty is the market leader, whether you're looking for a condo, townhouse, or second home in Notre Dame country. Check out the affordable Eddie Square townhomes, three-story units, starting in the mid-300s. Brennan's View luxury condos near Eddie Square or Echoes Villas, four- and five-bedroom upscale retreats. And don't miss the bell. Terry, uh... A villas, a new home community just north of campus, whether it's for pure enjoyment or an investment property opportunity, Irish Realty has you covered in the Notre Dame market. Check out irishrealty.net to find out more. So uh, thank you to our sponsors over at Irish Realty. Bell Terry. T Ter, I can never pronounce that word correctly. I need to figure that out before the, I read this, uh, this ad next time. Uh, Super Chats. Uh, we had Javid with another one. He said, "Last one. Thanks for putting up with our craziness here on the mess here and on the message board. You guys have been phenomenal all season. We know it's a grind. Thank you, Jensen Co. Irish. You know, Tim, I could not believe the amount of texts and tweets and whatnot 
from pe- when when Angeli threw the pick from people like like just like like trolling me and shit talking. I'm like, you people need to get a freaking life. Like it, it's not that deep, folks. Um, it, it was one throw. It's, you it's, guys, it's, like, listen. It, the people who will not give Steve any credit for any time he does anything what good. You can't then shit talk him every time he does something bad. Yeah. Like, does this does it matter or does it not? It can't only matter when he does bad things. And that just goes for football and like any players in general. I, I mean, some people just need to really get a life. I mean, it, it's not that serious, but I I, I I digress. No, I hear you, man. I, I I can't even imagine on Twitter people just tagging you on Twitter. Oh, look at me. It's like come on, come on. Come on. It's it, it it goes back to the over hyping in, in the in the games that he had. It's it's all experience, and that's and that's what it's about when you're a young player playing in garbage time. Let's be honest. That's what that's what it is. You go in there and you do the best you can, and you make some plays. You learn from it. You know all the quarterback talk, man. It's all about what they do in practice, what they're doing in practice, spring ball next year, all those things. So yeah. He throws a pick in garbage time against Stanford. He throws a couple of touchdowns in garbage time. Yeah, other it's all experience, and there's nothing wrong with all of that. So, but anyways, that had nothing to do with Javid Super Chat. But Javid, I, I really appreciate you, my friend, uh, and thank you for the support and very, very generous Super Chats tonight. Chris Darlington asks, "When will we find out our bowl opponents?" That'll be December third. I think December third. That Sunday. The yeah, Sunday afternoon. Yeah. So. uh yeah, not so not tomorrow. The, the Sunday after the uh, the championship games, which will be fascinating. Tim, who do you think ends up in the uh, college football playoff? Well, that's what I was just looking at. Heck, man, George is only up by a touchdown against unranked. Um, which I'm gonna call it. George's how, uh, how George much time? Uh, minute fifty seven. Oh, but George is driving. They're in the red zone, so they'll probably punch one in. But yeah, George, uh, Florida State won. Congrats to them with obviously the backup quarterback. I just saw the score. Uh, you got to go. I don't know, Mike, man. It's wild. Alabama, the, the, the Alabama game today was like unbelievable. Uh, it's like, does Alabama get in if they beat Georgia? How do you keep an SEC team out, right? Michigan's in. They're going to, I mean, I, by the way, I had that game on background yesterday. Uh, Iowa, Nebraska. That is, some of the worst football in America. It's so bad. And here they are, ten and two. It is so bad. It's not even. It's not even football. It's bad. So when I hear people complaining about Notre Dame and oh my God, Notre Dame's only scoring against these guys and this offense, it, all the whining about Notre Dame this year. Go watch some Big Ten teams. And it is bad football. Michigan's going to win that by five, six touchdowns. It's not even going to be a close. Michigan's a lock in. I would have to say Florida State, Louisville, Florida State wins. How do you keep them out? They're undefeated, right? They're undefeated ACC champ, even with a backup quarterback. They went on the road today and won in the swamp with a backup. So and Louisville you, lost today. So you got to get them. The Pac-12 championship game is going to be awesome. I love Oregon. I hope they get in. But well, what if? Them. Oh, it's nuts, dude. Don't even say what if. What if? Because there's so many what ifs, like with Texas. The Texas what if. Is, Oregon, is, let's say, so Texas wins the Big 12 championship. Oregon yeah. beats Washington. Um, Alabama wins. It's so Ohio State drops out, but still, it's a one loss team. Um, yeah, but they're not going to make it. So you're going to have no Ohio, Ohio State needed Florida State to lose. And then today. let's say Bama beats Georgia. Like, then you have these one loss conference champions and these like. Elite one loss, not it's fun. It's it, it's a kind of ironic that this is the the, the last year of the fourteen playoff is when this yeah. is so hectic as yes. top four. It's kind of like a well, you know, scripted that it's like all right, let's uh let's make it to where you're gonna want a twelve team playoff for sure if you're on the fence about it. So usually these things work itself out, Tim. And uh, they always work themselves. Well, out. I don't know about this year. Somebody might get a crazy snub that would have made it usually. Yeah, but it'll work themselves out. You know, damn well the committee is like they're going to do voodoo, you know, voodoo dances all week and play to the rain gods that Louisville beats Florida State, so Florida State gets out of there. And they and they have a shot 
for maybe, you know, uh, Ohio State to get back in there. So, you know, they always love to try and do that stuff. And then you're right, man. If Alabama pulls off the upset against Georgia, it's going to be a hell of a football game. It's going to be – it's pretty evenly matched Um, because Georgia doesn't do what Auburn does today. Auburn just ran – you know, Hugh Freeze knows how to coach against uh, Nick Saban. But um, <laughs> if Alabama wins – you know damn well they they want to, you know, how do you keep Auburn or excuse me, Alabama, Georgia? Yeah. You're right, Mike. It's nuts. Now I know some people don't like the 12 team playoff. I love it because these games still matter. It's still all about seeds. You'd rather be at home, right? You'd rather you'd rather be a top four seed than you would six seed playing that extra game against somebody. I still think they matter. I mean, it's all about seed the, the seeding process. I don't know. I I, I love it and then I don't. I, I, I mean, me personally, I, I love the four. I, I never – it's like, stay four. I like the four. I I, I like the – you it, you it matters. you got to be 12-0 and 0 or 11-1. and 1. About sure. six. I've always liked six. Yeah, okay. All right. The top top two get a buy. I, I get that. But the the 12, it, it still matters because it's still about what seed do you get. Do you have to go on a road? Because remember, you know, you're going to get a home playoff game five through eight. So all of a sudden you're number nine just sitting there. Whew, you got to yeah. go on the road to go play Alabama. Say you're Louisville, right? You got to go on the road to play Alabama. You're done. Yeah. So, you know, some of these are still going to matter somehow. Go Irish, $5 Super Chat. Thank you very much. You said prediction. How many times will you guys wear ties during the 2024 season? 13, 14, or 15 times? Ooh. I see where he's getting at with this. Well, we, hold on. Well, we skipped one this year when you were in South Bend for the is that pit. Yeah, pit, we didn't wear ties. So you could take one out, but me personally, thirteen. It's going to be thirteen. Uh, I mean, Notre Dame's not a. I but don't, I don't think it's a playoff team next year. So I'll say thirteen, Mike. But what? What about like signing day? Because Tim, we'll uh, do a show on signing day. And we'll he's talking games. Time. He's talking games. He's talking no, Saturday he's night during the season, and signing day is during the football season. He's talking games. I, I know no, he's no, over no. under thirteen five. I'll I'll do the under. I'm sticking thirteen. Go Irish. Thank you for the fun $10 super chat. Tim Cardi says, how how about Snead on the forced fumble? Even lost his home. Yeah, it was a nice nice hit. Was glad to see it not go to uh, review. No one needed to see that. Um, but uh, yeah, Snead, uh, Snead's a good football player. Athlete, man. He's, he's, he's my Xavier Watts from last year, where I always complain Xavier Watts wasn't playing enough. Same with Snead. That dude, man, is going to be electric. He's got to be on. He's he's got to play fifty five snaps a game next year. He is so fast, so explosive. He's going to cause havoc plays the more he's on the field. Just as we saw Xavier Watts this season, once he started to get on the field that last few games last year. Um, I, I love Snead. I, I I can't wait to see him on the field a ton. He's gotten tons of experience this year playing in the dime, the Aztec package. He's been out there like clockwork all season. So great experience for him. He definitely has to be a dude as a junior next year. The Tim McCarty, thank you for another super chat. Very generous. Thank you very much. Uh, Colin says, transfer portals ruining college football. Prove me wrong. I mean, well, I mean, how am I going to prove you wrong if you already are against it, right? So so you want me to convince you it? It is what it is, man. It's. I mean, how can you deny people an opportunity to do something different, correct, after it? I mean, you know, people change majors, people may transfer schools. So why are you telling a 19 year old kid he can't go somewhere else? That's the way I look at it. So it's it's out there. It's not going yeah. back. It, yeah. it is what it is. It's, it's opportunities for people to make something better for themselves. So be it. Is it ruining college football? I don't know. Is it ruining Oregon with Bo Nix or so and so and so? It's, it's, it's Sam Hartman. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I mean, it's helping people all over. I mean, Baptiste. I mean, Baptiste was on the bench for five years at Ohio State. Is it ruining, you know, Baptiste for coming to Notre Dame this year? How about Harper, who's been the nickel yeah. all season long? Is it ruin Harper's performance? I mean, you go back to Cody Riggs, who was the transfer, the grad transfer from Florida who came to Notre Dame started. Or is it ruin Nick McLeod, who came from NC State? He was a captain at NC State, comes to Notre Dame. Got his first interception, I believe, last week in the NFL. He's been in the NFL, what, three years? Has it ruined him? No. It's it, it's here. Not every team is Colorado. That's the other thing we got to remember. 
You know, not every team's going and getting 55, 60 transfers. Not everyone's doing that. You know, some will take eight, some will take 10, some will take 25 of like uh, Jeff Brom in Louisville. Brian Kelly did it last year at LSU. If you're a new coach, that's the positive of boom. A new coach could go out there and build his team fast. In the past, man, you just had to sit there and you better fingers crossed your recruiting is good or you're fired. So yeah. I'm all for it. It's positive. Matthew Scott to our super chat says, uh, estimate left for the NFL tonight. Agree. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I, don't, I think he, this was his last game for a while. I think those, but he hasn't, obviously he hasn't declared anything yet. And uh, we will, uh, we'll, 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 we'll hear. Yeah, from I've, right heard, from I've heard takes about, you know, cause I mean, you know, everyone talks about Sam Hartman and his, you know, NIL. I mean, estimate has got tons of it. He's all over the darn place with NIL. So do you do, you know, Blake Horn came back for a, you know, a fourth year, obviously at Michigan's running back. So it estimate do that. That's tough, man. That's just tough to, as you said it, Mike, a thousand times in the last few weeks, just to go to the NFL, get that clock starting like Kyron Williams, it is paying off dividends and Kyron Williams is going to get a second contract somewhere. Yeah. So that's that, that's that goal. You get that second contract. It's called pension for life. And yeah. um, that's what it's about. You get you that know, clock rolling. A lot of people say, where are Mike and Tim? No one ever asks, how are Mike and Tim? That's what Carl asked. Oh, How are man. you, Mike? Tim, do you have a good Thanksgiving? Had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, mother, man, mother, one did a heck of a job this year, so it's not a great Thanksgiving. It's a good week. Had a great day today, just sitting back watching football. Had a, doing a ton of stuff around the house, prepping for Christmas. Unbelievable games. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously the big one in the morning, the Iron Bowl was just freaking unbelievable ending, and then top it off with the Notre Dame win, get nine wins, and. Get ready for back-to-back -back, uh, little bowl games for the Irish here. Before we get back into some Notre Dame football talk, I'm curious because this is a, a topic I'm very, very passionate about, and I hope you agree with me. When do you start to turn the page to Christmas? Are you like once – like if it's November, I'm listening to Christmas music and putting up the tree. Are you like December? Like where, where do you kind of stand on that? Ours is next weekend. Next weekend. Thanksgiving's Thanksgiving. You start prepping a little bit, but next weekend is – is when we start rolling, start getting the decorations up. We got the tree gets dropped off from the local Cub Scouts, and uh, roll from there. That's been our little uh, tradition. Yeah. It's next uh, week. Next weekend, Christmas starts to rock, Mike. It's yeah. December. One of my one of my friends locally, a couple weeks ago, they put up their tree, and I'm just like the disrespect of Thanksgiving. I my my thing is after Thanksgiving dinner, you can start celebrating Christmas. You know, watch the elf, watch Christmas vacation, whatever your favorite Christmas movie is, right after Thanksgiving dinner. But you got to respect Thanksgiving, it really pisses me off. Um, but uh, hopefully, not a different discussion for a different day. We don't need to talk about it. So, Tim, nine and three, um, they beat you know who, who they were supposed to be kind of season, and then you know, beat USC, very exciting win at the time. Then USC kind of falls apart from there. Lose to Clemson in a, just an ugly game. Really should have beat Ohio State. Man. Probably should have lost to Duke, if we're going to be honest with you guys. And they end up losing Ohio State. Do beat Duke. Louisville, you know, Irish fall apart. It's a 9-3 and three season, Tim. I had a good bit of higher expectations. I thought that this was a 10-2 and two or 11-1 team. And I think that multiple teams, things uh, can be true that Notre Dame in in like Sam Hartman was not the truck that I thought he was I think that is very much accurate um but I also think that the the the, the pieces around him like offensively just were not were not there um at, especially at the receiver position and some questionable play calling and overall just you know, just decision making. Um, you know, from from Jared Parker and and uh, tendencies, maybe. Um, so it's not a bad season. It's not a great season. It's just it's it's just a kind of a solid season. It's it's kind of what I mean. I'm a one point prediction away from you know because I picked Louisville. I picked Notre Dame to beat Louisville 31-30. I thought I remember saying that was going to be the toughest game of the year. I just 
felt that was just going to be one of those games they have to survive. I'm a big Jeff Brom fan, um, even though they lost today. But still, he's a hell of a football coach. I thought Notre Dame would go one and two versus the big three. That's what they did. I predicted them to beat USC, and they did. Um, they went one and two last year. Clemson, I mean, it's tough because you're like, oh, Clemson was four and four. But they were, they're nationally ranked in everything, even higher than Notre Dame on defense. They were elite on defense that day. And I think the Clemson game is really the ultimate game of – I mean, Notre Dame lost by one score. They, they kicked field goals by Clemson scored touchdowns. That's what that thing came down to. Hartman stunk that day. Why did he stink? He was off. He was inaccurate. I think he was flustered because the Clemson DBs were kicking the hell out of Notre Dame's wide receivers. It's pretty noticeable and watching the, the film in there. Ohio State, man, it's just, I mean, Ohio State, the Ohio State Notre Dame game is literally the same as it was Michigan, Ohio State today. I mean, those teams, remember, they, they each stuffed each other on fourth downs in scoring territory. So it's not, you know, the true 17 14 punt fest. It was those guys were moving the ball up and down the field. They didn't get it in. That game is easily be a 31 30 type of a game. Michigan gets the damn pick. Notre Dame drops the pick, right? So that's the difference in those two games. And Louisville is just, I mean, you talk to any Notre Dame fan that's been watching Notre Dame football for 50 years, there's certain games you get ambushed. They got ambushed in 2015 at Stanford, 2017 against Miami. Michigan, 2019, got ambushed. This, it, it happens. They got their butts kicked that, that that night. You know, they didn't make big tackles. Uh, DJ Brown whiffed, you know, on the big touchdown run. Hartman's interceptions because he's trying to force it because they're behind in that third and fourth quarter. You go nine and three. So I had ten and I had ten and two with a one point win at Louisville. So I feel I was pretty close to what this team was. It, some at people's expectations of eleven and one. 12, 12 and 0 and stuff like that. I never understood it because of the wide receivers. I just felt that was going to bite him in the butt, and it did this year. Yeah. And even so, very close. Oh, yeah. I mean, I seriously. Mean, I, mean, I mean, even the Louisville game, that's a one-score game. Notre Dame had the lead in the third quarter, which is when you look back at that game, you think they got their butt kicked. They had the lead in the third quarter against Louisville, who went into today 10th-ranked team in the country. So – they were right there, obviously. And the Ohio State game is always going to be the kicker because of it's Ohio State. It's yeah. you had it for crying out loud. You had it. You know, and then Clemson's Clemson. Clemson won again today, Mike. They're going to go to a bowl game with a shot to win nine games when a month ago people were talking about is Davo going to even have a 500 season. So that tell you, I mean, they demolished Drake May in those, or no, they beat South Carolina today, excuse me. NC State's beating up Drake May in North Carolina today. So, yeah, they went nine and three. Um, the SC game is still special because it's USC, and they just, I mean, they were what, nine or 10? And that was the downfall of SC after that game, man. Everyone just tore into USC and all their, uh, faults and failings hit them hard the last half of the season and Notre Dame started that. So I think that's pretty cool, but it's nine and three. Is it a successful season? I'll say no. Cause you're going to a mid tier. That's my, that's my opinion real quick. You're going to a mid tier bowl two years in a row with Marcus Freeman now. Yeah. Two years in a row. And now you hold on my last 12 seconds. Now you're going into year three and we're seeing a lot of comments about a lot of dudes leaving, are these recruiting classes really as good as they are? We are going to know because if Freeman's not in that final 12 next year, three years in a row going to a mid tier bowl under Freeman is, 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 is not a good uh, yeah. three seasons. Yeah. The schedule is definitely, this was a difficult Notre Dame oh, schedule. I mean, next it, year is it way really softer. Nine, nine months out, it, you know, 10 months out, it's softer than yeah. it is this year, without a doubt. Yeah, and we have a super chat asking about that, but I know this is not going to be a popular take for Notre Dame fans. So just remember that the commenter here says, uh, "You're a reminder that Mike Singer rocks." Just just remember that before I say what I'm about to say. Okay, look around at college football. Think about some of the really good, like college football players. Think about Clemson who just finished seven and four in the regular season. 
Eight and that's a team that won a national championship recently, right? I think that, like, when Brian Kelly's winning all those 10 win, you know, just double digit seasons, um, but not a national championship, it's like, man, this guy's just not getting us over the hump. But just think about, like, if you were one of those six Stanford fans and how far that program has fallen off. Imagine being like a Texas A&M fan, a Michigan State fan. Um, I mean, Miami, Florida. Think about some of those programs that are blue bloods in college football that have just, they fall off. And Notre Dame is just steady Eddie. Obviously, there's the blip in 2016. But there, there there's something to it. Listen, if you are, perfection is 100% necessary, and that's all that I will accept cool i'm sure your wife loves you and you are very fun at parties um but there's something to notre dame you know just right there right just a, a winning program year in and year out um you know in the past 15 years or so there, there there's there's really something to that that um i think we, we we should appreciate notre dame you know has a really good chance of getting to 10 wins it's not a national championship. It's not a playoff berth. I get it. Um, you know, I, I'm a little let down by the season because of expectations that I myself had. Um, but uh, you you do look at some of these programs around the country and the turmoil that they have, and Notre Dame does not have that. And then, of course, you can look at programs that are competing for a national title this year, and you're like, man, I wish you, you had that. But, you know, there's the glass half full approach as well, Tim. True. You know, it's. I mean, we're going to know, hey, it's year three. We're going to know a lot next year. So, but no, I mean, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take a step back here and say, Mike, Notre Dame fans do not compare themselves to Texas A&M, a program that's won one title in 75 years. So we are not A&M. We're not Michigan State. We're not none of them. I mean, this is Notre Dame. If Notre, if, if the idiot running back from Auburn in 2021 doesn't step out of bounds, Notre Dame's in the playoffs in 2021. So we're two years, even though it was a soft schedule, we could say all that stuff. They only played one good team, Cincinnati, and beat them. Well, Cincinnati would have been the three seed. Notre Dame would have been the four playing Alabama that year. Uh, excuse me, they would have been knocked out. Auburn would have won the thing. But Notre Dame would have been the four seed. So we're two seasons removed from going to the playoffs in 2020 and 21. And now it's two years in a row of going to the Gator Bowl and the Royer Quest Bowl. So that's – I mean, Notre Dame has – High expectations. Maybe they should be dampened. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think Marcus Freeman has proven he's a nine and three football coach. It's what they are really the last two years when you look at it. I'm gonna say Notre Dame's gonna be a nine and three team next year until I've proven otherwise. I don't. I, I don't know what 2024 is gonna. You know, gonna bring. So you know, yeah, we are ten wins, but they were competing. They were in the. They were in the championship hunt multiple times and. Those are the expectations when you come to Notre Dame. Yeah, I, I understand. I, I like you. It's a good point. Um, if you want but, to point to when you would walk down the street and everything's still in black and white, because that's how long ago it's been since Notre Dame's won a national title. That's fine. That long. That's the expectations. It's 35 years ago. Bit. You know, no, but there are great seasons. Like, you know, the, I'm the last teasing, time. by the way, folks. Just don't get no, too No, no, exactly. But the guy said, you know, the guy who just wrote on there, um, you know, I survived Bob Davey. Mike Goolsby's uh, rookie year, his freshman year, 2000, you know, the 2000 season, that was a, you know, a football team that went nine and two and, and earned it. That was a hell of a season. There are successful nine and two, 10 and two type years that come out of nowhere. And you're like, damn, look at that year. Obviously, Willingham's first year. Charlie Weiss had a, Charlie Weiss goes nine and three in the regular season in 2005. And he's an icon where the next year they're 10 and two. And that's like, in the regular season, and it was a letdown. That, that was a letdown year because the expectations were so high. So there are seasons like that. Nine and three, it's a solid season. It, it, at the end of the day, to me, it's it's a solid season. It's not, especially these older dudes, man. There's a lot of vets on this football team. I think that's yeah. why your expectations, I mean, you talk to the Notre Dame people, are like, we got a good team. We got, you know, I mean, that's why you predicted 11-1. You thought these guys were going to rise up, and they did. I mean, the last two freaking games by 
one score when you get Ohio State, which yeah. is the kicker, and the Louisville game got away from them. So were they close? Sure. But they end up being nine and three because they just didn't make plays. They they didn't have enough, they don't, they don't have enough playmakers. I think that is the biggest thing Notre Dame lacks is a dude. I mean, shit, excuse me, uh, the LSU guy today. The LSU wide receivers just jumping, doing backflips, catching touchdown passes. He's so freaking good. The last play to Alabama, the guy's so damn good. Michigan dudes making plays all over the place. So it still comes down to a damn playmaker. And that's what these Irish need to find and get to truly go into a final four, a final eight, whatever the heck it's going to be down the road and say, we got a legit shot. Yeah. Clemson eight and four, by the way, my bad seven to four going into the night. Yeah. Uh, Tim super chat says uh, thoughts on next year's schedule playoff caliber two week. I mean, I don't think there's such a thing as two week playoffs or, or schedule anymore. Yeah, we're gonna playing our five opponents. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah it's, like- it's, it's it's not too weak. I mean, to me, I mean, the A&M game, you can say what you want about A&M. It's going to be a new coach. It means they're going to be hyped up, fired up. I bet you five bucks that game gets moved to that Sunday night, Monday night game. You know, where they do that Labor Day. I bet you that's the Sunday night primetime game when they make their TV schedules. That game's going to be lights out crazy. Florida State's going to be a hell of a football team. That's down the road. Yep. And it's not easy to win in the Coliseum. So, and Lincoln Riley's going to have, he's going to go out and get an elite DC. This, Some of the guys he's already interviewing are dudes. And the, the, you know, he's going to have a week schedule. I just don't, I don't, I, it's not as tough as this year, but to I me, mean, Georgia this, Tech almost beat Georgia today. So, and you got to go on the road to go play the Ramblin' Rex. Yeah. So, Louisville just beat Notre Dame. It's, it's a schedule. When you look at that schedule, you should say 10 and 2. That's why I'm saying they're going to go nine and three. This is my yeah. prediction. Yeah, to me, like looking at oh, A and M's down. We'll go in there and beat them. I mean, that's what we said about Clemson this year. Yeah, they, they lost. A and M's got what guys. We, you know, Louisville wasn't supposed. You know, Notre Dame was favored by a touchdown on the road against Louisville. Louisville won. I mean, yeah, we'll. I mean, we'll just have to see. Um, and then that that the replacement game for Miami should be. Um, Army, I believe, which should be a pretty easy win. But yeah, the 12 team playoff, you don't really need to get these big wins for, you know, enhancing your your resume. It's just, you know, just don't lose and you should be okay as long as you're not playing Mac no, teams every week. No, I mean, that's a good point. It's, but still, with Notre Dame, you minimum, you got to win 10. That just gets you in the conversation. Yeah, at least. Yeah. And that gets you right in the, 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 the fringe, that, but if you go eleven and one at Notre Dame, right. you're gonna be in the playoffs. Yeah, Notre Dame goes eleven and one, but that's those have been few and far between. So those those are not easy to come to when you're at Notre Dame football. Yeah, Billy with a super chat. Thank you very much. Um, as we wind down tonight's show, he says, "Guys, I've tuned in every week. Thank you, or I'm sorry, excuse me, uh, grateful for your service." Um, you've kept us all company with your insight and your love of the game. At the end of the day, that's what's all about the love of the game. You're appreciated, well, Billy. Um, I really appreciate the super chat here and you were first on a live stream here at blue and gold. So that is very, very much appreciated, Billy. Uh, hope to see your name in more of these, um, you know, YouTube, um, chats moving forward. Yeah. I mean, we still got the bowl game. Tim and I will be live Wednesday night, Tim. Um, yeah, I, I know you tweeted me to, um, oh, man. to save some of those comments for the Wednesday show. So we'll definitely do that. And then someone said on a show a couple of weeks ago to to do like kind of like a transfer portal overview, like uh, who we would like to see Notre Dame. Uh, I mean, maybe not Position. go after, but like positions to kind of That's watch. Right, we so we will definitely do that on Wednesday night show. So please, guys, join us 8 p.m. Right. Eastern time Wednesday night. And uh, for folks wondering, let me go ahead and text Mr. Goolsby. Well, it's yeah, real quick, Mike, on the Twitter reactions. I go on Twitter just, you know, usually once or twice a day just to see some of the news. And then I saw your post, like, I don't, I don't remember what it was. It was something like, hey, guys, you know, win today. What's your thoughts? And it's just <laughs> negative time set. That's going back to the expectations, Notre Dame fans. I don't know how I don't know why Notre Dame fans have playoff hopes this year. I don't I don't I don't know where those came from. I think. Going to a New Year's New Year's Six, the expectations, I would say that's real. I, Competing in the final four, 
that means you had – and you're close. Once again, you're close, but you didn't do it. So All right, well, the expect – like you saying, I don't know where this came from. It came from guys like me and everyone thinking Sam Hartman was going to be this, this like truck who carries – these young receivers across the finish line. Like that's where it came from hope. So that I'm oh, answering your question of where did that come from? That's where it came from, Tim. But the whole um, thing it came the from season. these Hold huge on. expectations from, from, for Hartman. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, but, the, but I never, you know, the, the Hartman thing for who's he throwing it to. That's what I, I thought I never understood these. I mean, people are talking about forty touchdowns and stuff like that, and it's like, are you who who's catching five hundred passing yards in a game? I had five hundred in camp because like that. that was my Tennessee State pick. Come on, damn it! It's like I had to get one. That, that was my that was my one game. It was going to go crazy. He threw for three hundred. What once? Did he get twice? I think maybe only one time. Maybe, maybe two. But um, no, exactly. But I never thought he was going to be you know fifty touchdowns, four thousand. People are saying he's going to break Brady Quinn's records. I'm like. Brady Quinn had Jeff Samarja, Maurice Stovall, Darius Walker, Anthony Fasano, John Carlson. Those dudes aren't on Notre Dame's offense, so I never understood where those things came from. And Clawson's throwing to Golden Tate, Kyle Rudolph, Armando Allen, Michael Floyd. None of, none of these guys on Notre Dame's offense are on the too deep on those teams. So, but whatever. We'll definitely do a recap of the season here in the next week or two once we know the bull opponent. Yeah, Craig wants to know with the five dollar super chat who do you think Freeman wants as a transfer quarterback? I mean, we just this this is we will report on these things as we know them. Um, it, there's just really no use, and I mean, for us to speculate. Um, I think the Rogers kid from Mississippi State would be a good option. I think Bachmeyer just entered the portal. He'd be a great option. I don't know if Notre Dame would go after him because, you know, the the whole weird recruitment with Bear Bachmeyer and how they the ended up. receiver at Stanford? No, Bear. No, Hank. Oh, Hank's his brother's at Boise State, right? And then Louisiana Tech. Oh, okay, okay. Well, because Stanford's got a Bachmeyer, so yeah, that was Tiger, like, who uh, yeah. who caught a first down yeah. or something, or, or a t- I don't remember. What he, yeah. So Tiger Bach, the long haired kid. Yeah. Yes, so yes, we have yes. very athletic family. Um, okay. so I, I I don't know, but there's there's good options. And I think there's while there may not be that just like no brainer, um, I think there's really good options for Notre Dame to get a really experienced guy to, you know, probably be the favorite as a starter, but not like the uh, you know, the guaranteed, you know, number one, you know, kind of guy from the get-go. But uh Craig, appreciate yeah. the super chat. Yeah, and just real quick on that, you know, the portal quarterbacks last year. I mean, it's been it was DJ, you know, DJ went to, from Clemson to Oregon State out a solid year. Hartman, dude, last I, year was transfer portal craziness at quarterback because it was tons of quarterbacks following coaches. Almost everybody Mary. went to a coach who had already worked with, like Penix had worked with, you know, uh, Kalen DeBoer at, at Indiana, so he had a yeah. uh, that next new. The guy who went to uh, Oregon, obviously Caleb Williams followed his coach. All these guys started to follow their coaches, you know, two, over the two years. So that's kind of how that was. Last year was just a lot of one-year rental type guys. But Hartman and DJU, those have to end up being with the top two, I, I, I would assume. I haven't studied all of them from last year. You know, you're looking at Card, all those ACC quarterbacks. None of those guys had the years – DJ had and Sam Hartman. So at the end of the day, Notre Dame got definitely got one of the, the best transfer quarterbacks out of the portal last year. 7 p.m. Eastern time, Goolsby show Sunday night. Um, confirmed. Lock it in. Excited for that. As always, uh, Colin Miller, $5 super chat. Only thing I could think when Michigan intercepted oh, the pass from Colin McCord to win was DJ Brown dropping his gift wrapped interception for the W. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, seriously, it's the first thing I said. I was like, "Are you kidding me? Michigan's going to win this game on a freaking interception." <laughs> but oh well, as life goes, right? Yeah, I, hey, hey, that's three straight playoffs for Michigan. I know Notre Dame fans don't like Michigan. That's three straight. So they make the plays when they when they needed. So for me, a lot of people who have been following me in, in blue and gold for years, um, now. I I, I'm, I was kind of an outsider who was adopted as a, you know, as a Notre Dame guy here because I didn't like grow with, a, you know, allegiance to the program or anything. I just, 
got recommended for this job when, when blue and gold had a recruiting writer opening and, and, uh, and applied and, and got the job and, you know, obviously have, um, I mean, grew up following Notre Dame football as a cultural ball junkie. And then, you know, I've grown to really, let's be honest. I, I love Notre Dame. I mean, it, it just is what it is. You follow the program. It's, it's a pretty damn awesome program to follow. And I'm, I'm extremely blessed to uh, do this full time. Um, and, uh, and I've with that, I've also grown to really despise Michigan. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I know that might be frowned upon as a Big J journalist, but I don't like Michigan. Um, just, I it just, just to be honest. Um, yeah, okay, of, Tim. I, I just realized it's an hour ten. We've been, yeah. Well, so we're gonna we're gonna go through these super chats. Sure. Um, CC Schwab too says, "Great to hang out with the boys and ties." Go Irish. Told you. Hashtag told you so. Um, I don't know what the hashtag means, uh, but CC Schwab, it is a great to hang out with you as well, my friend. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Miguel says, I won't overlook Louisville, George Tech, FSU, USC, even even a and for the first game next year. Yeah, I mean. No, that's. You that's, can't, you can't do that. You, you can't. That's why I'm saying if you expect nine and three and they go 10 and two, you're happy. Yeah. I think after two years of Marcus Freeman, I think nine and three should be an expectation until we know. If these young guys he's recruited are really what we think they can be, and we'll know that pretty quickly. Yeah, folks, if you're joining us live or watching back and you haven't hit that thumbs up yet, be like my boy Kimchi here and make sure you hit that thumbs up. Miguel, thank you for the super chat. Lewis two dollars says, uh, "Does Sam play in the bowl game? He better. Um, he should be playing um, in the bowl game." And uh, I mean, that's basically what he said um, after the the Wake Forest game. He said two more games left. He needs to play in the bowl game for his New Orleans name legacy and, and, and all that stuff. Like yeah. he has to play in the bowl game. He's got nothing better going on. I no, mean, what, what's no, he gonna do for his, even draft, like I think it could be a good opportunity for his draft stock, although that's basically solidified at this point. But like just he needs he he needs to play in the bowl game. He's going to play in the bowl game. Yeah, he's gonna play in the bowl game. I mean, all this bowl game talk is quarterback sitting out or dudes going on day one or day two that's not sam hartman so he's yeah why would he he, he's gonna play he's gonna play i mean what's he gonna do you know unless he's just done playing he wants to go enjoy his money he made and go hang out in tahiti but he's gonna play if he is all about oh i love notre dame so much i think he wishes he would have been here all six years but he goes and sits in the bowl game he'd be a fraud in my opinion um so yeah. Not only sitting out for he's not with the protected draft status. It's like, you yeah, know. he doesn't really have that. Yeah, exactly. So no, he, he's he's going to play. He'll play, finish his season, and go from there. <laughs> uh, Lewis says, "Is Notre Dame quicker, more athletic under Freeman?" This is going to be the last comment, and we're going to end the show. I would say uh, yes, and uh, that's something that Goolsby talks about a lot in our Sunday show. Yeah, I will say we'll see. I mean, I I mean to be very brutally honest, what it, more athletic? I, I'm assuming the you know, the, the recruits he's talking about. So yeah, I mean, Notre Dame's, there's some talented young guys. Now they got to come together and, and have a hell of a year three next year. So, I mean, we're, I mean, we're going to, we're going to find, we're, we're definitely going to find out because I'm fully expecting a boatload of older dudes to move on in life. Yeah. All right. Well, Tim, great regular season. The numbers have been fantastic. The growth of our YouTube channel, everything has been, uh, it's been amazing. And we really could not do it without your guys' supports. And um, I'm very blessed to work um, with, you know, guys like Tim and Goolsby and Jack Sobel and Horka and Kyle Kelly. We we have a tremendous crew of blue and gold. I'm blessed. You know, I kind of run the YouTube operation and all the planning and scheduling. And, you know, I'm on 95% of these shows and everything, but I couldn't do it with guys like Tim Hyde. Um, if I could work with 10 Tim Hydes, I'd be, I'd be happy. Like Tim's a, Tim's a great guy to, uh, uh, to, to work with. So uh, answer back and forth with, right. So that my, my, I, I love arguing with Tim. Um, let's, let's, I, I, I love arguing. It's like, I don't get first. Pers- I, lo- I love it. I think it's fun. I think, Chatting, debating, throwing things out all the time. There's there's nothing wrong with that. So nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I, it's enjoyable. Yeah. Too many people take too many things personal in this well, world. I, like, I, I love I life out. and smile, man. Yeah, I tweeted out before our show last Wednesday. I was like, hey, come join us. Or did you? And uh, <laughs> listen to me trash or, or, you know, roast Tim for his take. You know, whatever it was. 
and people are like, how dare you say that, Mike? Tim gets it everything right. I'm like, right, oh my god, I did not read that right. one. I didn't, hey, I have a simple philosophy in life. As I, as you know, I, I was, uh, I saw a little bit of fun times in downtown Somalia, and uh, when I left that, I'm just like, I'm gonna enjoy my life. So yeah, yeah I, I try not to hold grudges, be bitter, enjoy. Talk. I mean, my God, Mike, we're sitting here talking to Notre Dame football with, with thousands of people. This is like yeah. awesome. So it's a, yeah. it's a true blessing. So Chris asked, when's the next show? Uh, so we'll have 7 p.m. Eastern time. Ghouls be a uh, Horka show will be Monday or Tuesday with Darren Pritchett. And then uh, Tim and I will be back on the channel Wednesday What's night, that? 8 p.m. Eastern time. Friday morning recruiting show with myself and Kyle Kelly. Um, and then what exactly the shows look like in the off season. Um, TBD. I'm sure we'll do something for like a bowl game reaction with me and whoever right. can join me. And then we'll do, um, you know, signing day stuff. Like we'll, we'll have tons of, you know, yeah, signing day day. Live. we'll definitely yeah, do a live signing day. It's yeah. Wednesday. That's our Wednesday night slot. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to sign off there folks. If you have not done so yet, please hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. Follow me on Twitter at Mike T singer. Uh, follow the blue and gold uh, Twitter page at BGI news. Tim's Twitter is at coach Timmy Hyde head to blue and gold.com for more coverage. Folks. This is, we will see you later. Uh, no goodbyes here. We will. Uh, yeah. We, we got regular seasons over, but I mean, see you this, this, night. This, is, this is 365 days a year on our YouTube channel here in our, in our website, blue and gold.com. So uh, we'll appreciate, we, we do appreciate you guys. And as always, we will catch you next time.